district reports and presentations, our budget presentation, uh, capital, my glasses are, are not working, uh, capital benefits component, uh, turn you in the hands of uh, Mrs. Creedon and Mr. Tuttle at this time. Hello, good evening, uh, Pastor Williams, members of the board, assistant, or um, interim superintendent, Ms. Creedon. Um, tonight, we're doing our second night of um, budget presentations as we do normally every year. Uh, we usually have a four-week four cycle of presentations. Tonight is uh, capital and benefits. Uh, the last meeting we did administrative. Um, the next one we'll do program, and the last one we'll do revenue and discussion. Uh, so for tonight, the, um, what we're going to talk about first is the capital. Uh, that's roughly about 15% of our overall budget. So it's a pretty significant amount of money, um, and a lot of operational things happen inside this budget, from snow plowing to tree removal, cleaning windows, uh, floors, um, making sure health and safety uh, is our number one priority under this budget. Um, so as we do every year in every meeting, we go over our assumptions. So the things we take into consideration before we start looking at the numbers. Um, one is the consumer price index averaging 3%. Our health insurance premiums every year rise between 5 to 6%. Uh, our tax cap maximum will be 2% estimated. Teacher retirement system estimated at 10.29%. And our employee retirement system at 16.2%. And some more assumptions. Uh, one of our, Bo for BOCES services, we estimate 5%. Uh, and that's for all the services BOCES has. That's with the career and technical, that's with special education, uh, the capital um, and rent that we um, must pay every year. Uh, the other thing that we're looking at uh, for assumptions is the big one for us this year is the foundation aid, which we saw an increase over 21% in foundation aid this year. Mr. Gomez talked about that, the fair funding. Uh, and the government has actually come through with uh, a significant amount of uh, foundation aid increase. And we'll talk about that in a couple more uh, presentations. Um, and our contractual salaries every year estimated roughly increase 5% based on collective bargaining agreements. So we take all those into consideration and we try to formulate a budget um, based on this uh, one component. So what we'll combine is operations and maintenance. Uh, better known as buildings and grounds for us, but the state refers to it as operations and maintenance. Um, so inside there we have salaries uh, for directors, cleaners, custodians, utilities. Um, we have for director of security, and anything that would do with uh, building operations and maintenance of a district. We also have equipment that could be snowplow trucks, that could be lawnmowers, that could be scrubbers for the buildings. Uh, anything that has to do with equipment, forklifts, backhoes, things like that. And then we have a line for supplies, which is paper towels, toilet paper, um, things, cleaning supplies that they need for um, to clean the buildings. And then we have utilities, which would be our gas, our electric, uh, our phone, and our water bills. The one thing we also have under this operation and maintenance is our school resource officers, which we've started quite a few years ago, been very successful for us. Um, right now you see an asterisk up there. Right now we currently have seven resource officers, but we're asking the board for an additional budget request this year to add an additional middle, uh, one at the high school. Um, so that's an additional budget request for this year. So that'll give us eight SROs for the district. Um, and one of the things that we're seeing with COVID-19 in last year's budget, just in operations and maintenance, we had budgeted 1.3 million. Uh, that was for extra cleaners, for extra supplies, uh, for masks, um, fa uh, shields for desks, Anything that had to do with COVID-related uh, health and safety um, for students and staff. Um, so right now we're looking at forecasting based on what we're seeing, uh, and the numbers looking at scaling back those um, that, those budget lines. Uh, obviously, keeping a close eye on before we get to an actual adoption. You know what's going to happen uh, with COVID cleaning and stuff like that. Um, so our debt service, uh, a couple things that we have there every year. We have uh, our principal and interest that we owe. Uh, and that's for capital projects that we have. Um, and when we get to the revenue portion, we'll see where state aid actually helps pay a majority of, uh, of our debt service. And that can come in the form of a ban, which is a bond anticipation note. So 
If we go out, so we just did Twin Towers um, approval, and what we do before we start, we need to do a bond anticipation note, and then we go out and borrow money, and then we, so we can pay the contractors and all the services to build the infrastructure and renovations. And then when the job is actually complete, then we go to bonding, right? So we actually sell bonds to um, investors, whoever, whoever is looking to buy them, and then we actually um, will have to pay those bonds back. So, uh, and then we also have an energy performance contract. Um, so typically what happens is a company like, say like Siemens, will come in and say, we can go through a building and replace all your lights and we're gonna save you X amount of dollars. And so the state has said that as an approval of um, a performance contract and they can, they'll pay us aid on that. And the company is guaranteed to save us that much money that they estimated we would save. And it could be anywhere from HVAC, lighting, anything that's, gonna, or window replacement, anything that's gonna help save uh, money and, and performance. So those are the three debt service categories that we um, will deal with this year. So looking at our overall budget, um, it's actually decreased about 2.5 million from last year. Um, and that's due to the COVID-19 uh, decrease and also our debt service has decreased. And there's some other um, significant things um, that we were able to get to the 2.5 decrease in our overall budget. So this year uh, we're looking at 26,598,000 um, is our overall proposed budget. And the one thing I wanna keep emphasizing with a proposal is that things keep changing for us um, as we get closer to actually presenting the final uh, budget to the board for their adoption. And some of that could be state aid funding will change when the budget passes in April. Some of it could be um, we've identified we need some more um, mandates that the state has imposed or we just feel that we wanna change some programs and we need some different funding in those areas. So um, that being, uh, this is quite a significant change for us here, um, which is kind of, kind of to the board's credit, we've been um, really able to do a lot and we're trying to do a lot more with less and we're looking at each budget line you know, even more carefully these days. Um, trying to get a really to balance the budget and get a positive vote. So with that 2.5 million um, decrease, that'll be an 8.69% 8, 8 decrease in the overall capital and maintenance budget. And again, that's only the 15% of the overall budget. So when we do the three components, um, you, won't, you'll, you won't see a total decrease of 8.6 when we start adding them and combining them all together and then we'll finally get a final number and we'll kind of see that over the next two meetings and what that number will actually look like. So inside this capital budget, we also, we have um, the school resource officers and we talked about the debt service. Um, we do a transfer to capital and we usually do $100,000 and that's for a um, outlay, capital outlay project that the state allows us to do every year where we can do some small significant repairs um, and then they just automatically will give us aid back on that $100,000. So that's it for the budget um, for maintenance and operations. And what I'll do is ask if anyone has any questions about that or we can go through benefits and ask questions at, at the end. So that was the operations and maintenance. If anyone has any questions regarding that. Mr. Gomez. Gomez. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. First, I wanna say I'm very pleased with the commitment to uh, our public safety, increasing uh, the number of SROs. There's no right to strike against public safety anywhere, anytime, and that our district is proactive. We're making sure that we will not put our guard down, okay? And that we don't have to wait for some news of something that happened in some other place to respond. We are taking proper preventive steps, addressing the need that many parents have raised about security issues in the high school given the large population. And I think our, our SRO program has worked. It's one that also teaches the children uh, to develop respect and trust for law enforcement, uh, inspire them to maybe to go into law enforcement and has kept our, our community, not just the kids, but our teaching staff safe. So I'm very happy with that. I did have a question on the, uh, on the reduction and I'm happy to move that we're being very fiscally responsible, which has been our district's trademark. But with respect to the thing with judgments and claims, going from 100 or 90,000 down to 10,000, right. uh, could you maybe explain to more the rationale and come into that number? Yeah, so what we've, that, that's um, a line that the state has given us um, to actually budget if there's people have a judgment or any type of insurance claim or 
a lawsuit or something against the district or tax um, certiorari or anything of those things. So what we've seen uh, over the past, couple, it used to be at, um, I think it was at $500,000. So we've dwindled it down over the years because we're not, we haven't been using that account. So, you know, going through the budgeting, you feel like we don't need to keep carrying all that money if we're not being, if we're not using the account. And that's kind of what we're doing with all the account codes going through. And if we haven't used them and we're seeing like a minimal use, and then we'll just start, re we're starting to reduce those account codes um, just to get to where we need to be. And that's independent of the law firms that our district uh, retains for other issues. Yeah, so we have, um, we have a different, in the first, uh, last, uh, presentation we have a line for uh, the legal fees and so that's that line is separate than the judgment and claims and so this would be like something uh, or an or ordinary that we don't normally have right. anyone else no. any other questions for Mike on this one no. yes Mr. Perino thank you Nice job, uh, Mike, and I agree with uh, Mr. Gomez, uh, another SRO at the high school because of the size of the building and the, and the structure of the building is, uh, is very necessary. Um, just a, a question here, uh, and it, this is very, very difficult for you, it's assumptions for budgeting. Mm -hmm. The 3% consumer price index, the way inflation has taken off with, doesn't seem to be an end in sight right now. Um, how accurate do you think this really is? Uh, as again, I put it as estimated. Um, like if you look at the past year's history, it's gone up and down and it keeps spiking. Um, I'm using it as a um, benchmark. A, a benchmark yeah. and obviously things will escalate. Um, but the one, the one thing that's important is when we have um, collective bargaining agreements and things like that in place, those things are static and they remain you know, where they are. Uh, the things that we always have to worry about is gas, electricity, uh, all the utilities, you know, the gas for buses, gas for um, all the trucks that drive around in the district, uh, anything that we're buying, um, consumables, you know, those things are um, skyrocketing in price as well. Um, you know, I, I don't know what a year brings. It's hard. That's why we're trying to present something and forecasting based on what we know. Um, obviously, we're doing it for a year from now. If, and and uh, we're locked in with the contractual price. As I remember, I didn't quite look at this uh, in detail right at this moment. Uh, we're locked in uh, on electricity and gas. Correct, and yep. So, on. so that's a big benefit to us, I believe. Yes, this we, uh, we belong to the consortium. Um, there's three counties um, in Rockland County. Boatsy's actually manages uh, the bid process for us, and then when they do all that, we then we're able to lock in um, gas and electrical prices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so well, it's good, and it's a three-year lock-in, so it's it's pretty good for us right now. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Okay. You've answered that question. You've answered both my questions. Thank okay. you. Anybody else? No. Paul. But you mentioned the consortiums. Can you? Tell us th how many consortiums we're part of with BOCES. Um, as far as what's all the services that they have, mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't know the exact An number of estimate. Uh, it's got to be hundreds. Like with all the different special ed programs, the career and tech, yeah. we, and we send students to multiple BOCES and residentials. And um, the, the big one that I was talking about that consortium is all the a lot of dish, all the majority of the districts. Um, around that one consortium for the bidding process. Um, and I wish they actually had more of that um, for supplies and equipment and things like that it would be much more helpful to us. Thank you, appreciate that. So, so what, I'm, what, I'm learning, what I'm learning more and more every year, every year is, especially when it comes time for budget season, is um, how many how many different wheelhouses there are, how many different, how many different balls are in the air at the same time. And, um, and, to, and the development of budget, I think for anybody that doesn't understand it, and, I, and I'm, I'm grateful because our, super, our, 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 our interim superintendent has been putting in the time with meeting with different individuals in the public 
uh, explaining budget processes. Um, and I, I'll say this, I say this, and I think most everyone here has heard me say this before, but my first year ever looking at a budget, I felt like I was a deer caught in headlights. And, uh, and it took, it literally took a good three years to even really fully understand it. And for me, I'm a rocket science guy. If I'm gonna do it, I wanna know all the ins and outs. So, um, you know, this is, a, this, is, this is a lot, but for us to be coming in where we're at now with the hard work of, of fair funding, which, which, Mr., which Mr. Gomez has, has done such a fantastic job at, at, at carrying on that was started by Andy Warren and others, and, uh, and with your hard work. And it's been, it's, you know, it's been a couple of tough years. If you guys remember the, the times of budgets of like, what, 8.0 .8 tax levies and things of that nature. It was, it's scary and look where we're coming in now. I think that um, this, is, this is good work. This is good work. We still got a long way to go because of the uncertainties of society right now, but we'll keep going. So, all right, I'm sorry, Mike. Yeah, just as, um, as you talk about things that are scary. So a year ago, right now, I was just looking back at some notes from last year. Um, we were actually anticipating um, a 20% cut in aid if you remember at this time last year, and that was, um, you know, laying off, that had been uh, a dramatic layoff of staff in this district. So, yeah, we know, no, we've gone from that to, you know, getting 21% funding, so it's a, it's a pretty big swing yeah. um, in that regard, so. The, turn, the turnaround, the, the difference a year makes. Yeah, so it's good for us. Um, all right, so let's move on. Uh, so we're gonna talk about benefits now, and there's a little bit more, uh, about 21% of the overall budget is um, with benefits. And so when you, um, when you talk about school district budgets, usually the common th thread is that 75% of your overall budget is salaries, benefits uh, for staff. Okay, so this is where, although the benefits here is 20%, this is just the medical, the social security, FICA, and things like that, health benefits. Um, as I was just talking about, so we have our employee benefits, we have a teacher retirement system, the employee and retirement system. And even though individuals up for 10 years will contribute a certain amount, uh, the district pays the other half of that amount uh, regardless of um, whatever um, stage you're in. And once they reach 10 years, uh, then the district takes over the full amount of their uh, contribution. Um, so as I was explaining at the last meeting, um, it's like owning, um, you know, having a house and car payments, you owe money before you start work that day or that month, right? So that's, this, is a, this is where we owe money as a district um, is the benefit side. So we have the teacher retirement system, employee retirement system. We have a social, social security tax that we pay on everyone's salary. They pay some and we pay some. Uh, FICA tax is the same. We also pay workers' compensation, unemployment insurance, and then our big um, budget line is our health benefits. Um, and that's, you know, we went self-funded uh, four or five years ago and the plan uh, has been very positive for us. Uh, we have not raised rates for employees all but one time. Um, so we've been kind of steady and the district has been able to maintain uh, a pretty healthy uh, health benefit line for staff. Um, so if we look at the overall um, benefit expenditure for um, next year, uh, it's actually going up about $804,000 or 1.9%. Um, this is primarily putting money into the um, medical and dental insurance uh, line. Um, and why we do that is uh, this year we experienced a lot of um, catastrophic uh, surgeries and, and things of that nature and with COVID expenses too. So um, that's the one thing that's very volatile for us is the medical costs. Uh, the good thing with the district has um, been able to do is get the $5 million reserve that we have. So that can help us offset any um, additional and above and beyond costs that we budget for. So. We're, we're very good in that environment there. Um, so everything has uh, either gone up and down just very minimally. Uh, as you can see, uh, the employee retirement system has actually gone down about 9.28%. Uh, we're just trying to use some more reserves and, and some other ways to fund some of those lines. Uh, that's why we're seeing a little bit of a decrease in those areas. And then also if we have retirements, and it also depends on what tier the employee is in. So when we look at all those factors, um, when we do the budget. 
So the other thing we have is disability insurance. We also provide life insurance for, in some contracts for employees. Uh, we also have a union welfare benefit. Um, and these are all contractual obligations that we have under this uh, expenditures. So $804,000 increase here, um, which about almost a little bit less than 2% overall increase in the employee benefits. So uh, one of the things we'll be doing, uh, again, before we have the board adopt is reviewing each line carefully, making sure we have all our information on how many employees we have, uh, making sure the rates haven't changed for any of the uh, retirement systems, and then we can actually put our hard numbers um, down and, and get your approval on them. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about is our budget calendar. And yes, I have the dates right this time. I checked them a couple of times. Um, the next uh, meeting will be March 3rd. We'll be talking about our instructional programming. Uh, the big one for us is at the bottom, and that's the, um, the vote is May 17th. Um, and one of the milestones for the board will be the budget adoption on April 21st. So a meeting before the 21st, um, we'll, we'll present the final um, numbers to you, and then you'll have a couple weeks to review them, ask questions, we'll have a public hearing, um, and then we can uh, do the vote in May. Um, so I wanted to bring uh, Ms. Creeden in to talk about our community engagement in the school budget. So as we talked about um, at the last budget presentation at the last board meeting, um, we've done things slightly different the, this year in terms of gaining community input as we both develop the budget and continue to push information out there in terms of um, what would the budget look like. And so we're really you know, taking the lens of a variety of different community members. And so to date, we've held um, eight um, really small group sessions, Mr. Shuttle, myself, and one-on-one um, -on -one with community members from a variety of different um, areas. We've chosen some community members who um, have scholars who attend our schools, some who are um, not in our schools, some who own businesses locally and um, live in the city of Middletown, the town of Wallkill, um, are new to Middletown or who are alumni of Middletown for quite some time. And these conversations have been opportunities for us to share information from previous years so that when we get ready for each of these budget presentations, as well as getting ready to share information with the community at large, we are really honing the craft so that the information that we share out is the information the community is seeking so that when they um, come before um, the budget proposition and vote, um, on Super Tuesday, May 17th, they're really feeling that they've had an opportunity to both um, add voice to the budget development process and are also really confident that no matter what way they cast their vote, um, they, they were informed. And so those eight meetings that we've held to date, and we have additional ones scheduled in the coming weeks, have been really helpful to us in seeing um, how the community is consuming information and um, what they're hoping to see um, each time we present and in the, the information that will go out to the community in both print and in um, various forms of media. And so one of the other pieces that we've added, um, and this will actually get iterated just a tiny bit um, uh, tomorrow probably as well, because um, one of our meetings today resulted in um, some really important feedback from a community member that said, um, I love all these engagement sessions and they're great, but..." Um, the weekday and weeknight is really hard for me. So I'd love for you guys to do a session on a, a weekend morning so that you know, I'm not feeling rushed to get back from commuting and many families might share that as well. So we're, be sure to add an additional session on a weekend up here. Um, but so the first session that we're gonna do on March 7th is just really a, a deep dive into how the school district approaches the budget development process. And um, we hope that through this, people will, again, feel really comfortable that they have a better understanding of the components that are included in the budget, um, the different buckets that things fall into, how a district like Middletown generates revenue, and how we utilize that revenue to support our scholars' um, programs. The second offering that we're going to have in mid-March is a Talk About It Tuesday session where we'll really talk more about fiscal planning. We'll talk about how we forecast. Um, we're gonna touch on some of the topics that were touched on at the fair funding event in early December. 
and um, we'll, we'll spend some time diving into foundation aid and how we utilize that to support our programs. And then on March 31st, as we're kind of rounding out the months of March, we're going to um, rely on the community to drive the contents of that session. So we don't have a set agenda yet. Um, we wanna hear from the community over the course of the next month and um, you know, we will focus our session, it'll be largely driven by uh, the questions that the community is asking. What do they wanna know more about? And so what we have done is set up a budget email. And so this budget email um, will be monitored by Mr. Tuttle and I, and it's a place where folks can just email any question that they have related to the budget. Um, and if you can't see it up there, um, I know Mr. Witt is, um, putting information out on our social media platform and on our website, but it's just simply budget at ecsdm.org. So please feel free to um, put questions there. And as we get questions and begin to answer them, we'll curate a frequently asked questions document that'll be available on the website so folks can go back and re you know rely on that to see what others are asking. And then we'll finish out um, our community engagement pro process with a coffee and conversation, which will be um, at that point, the board will have adopted a budget and presented it to the community. And this will be the opportunity to not really hear about how a district develops a budget and where the different funding streams and expenses come from, but it'll be a time for you to dive in on the actual budget that we are presenting to the community. So we'll be available um, to really kind of tease it out and pick apart specific questions that individuals have. And then, like I said, we are um, excited at the idea that we learned today from um, a new community member, um, gave us tons of great feedback, and um, we'll be adding a weekend session so that these are accessible to um, you know, the entire community. And each of the sessions will take place, um, the ones that are scheduled here so far, from 6 to 7.30 p.m. right here in the Media Center. Okay, thank you. Um, we so what? For Amy. Oh, sorry. Amy, is there any thought to having? Is there any thought to having any of these videotaped, and so they could be put on to Mini TV? Yeah, I think we're going to feel them out a little bit because some of the feedback that we've heard to this point is that. Um, some folks want to have a little bit more of an intimate discussion and don't feel like they're standing up here, you know, on MIDI TV asking questions. They want to feel comfortable to ask a question and, you know, have a more natural dialogue. But I, so I think we're going to feel it out a little bit, but we do know that the information that we discuss at those sessions and the questions that are asked, we're going to continue to um, curate that in a document so that it gets shared out with the community at large. And we will, we were um, invited um, by both the city of Middletown and the town of Wallkill to um, present the budget for the first time this year um, at their um, meetings. So we're still working out the fine details of scheduling that, but it'll be a good opportunity because there's a certain audience that um, participates and engages in these meetings and watches these meetings, and there's a separate audience that um, you know, engages differently in the town of Wallkill and then also in the city of Middletown. So we're excited to be able to, um, you know, be able to have this as the first opportunity to do those this year too. Thank you. Sure, oh, sure Mrs. Susan. I liked Mrs. Tobias's suggestion of videotaping, um, perhaps and putting it on MIDI TV. I know that was very successful for the Fair Funding Community Forum. I was thinking maybe if we had an alternate um, option for those who aren't comfortable coming to the microphone at that meeting, then they could still be televised, but no one would feel uncomfortable. Yeah, that's a really good idea and similar thoughts today in our one-to-one -one discussion with the community member. And so I think that one of our, um, in addition to adding the Saturday session, we'll be doing um, a virtual option as well because some folks may want to just, you know, be cooking dinner or doing things at home and tune on and listen in and add a question. So I think you'll see that we're gonna to continue to refine and iterate our approach as we kind of go along and the community shares out with us what they're really looking for. So thank you. Thank you, Amy. Okay, um, so we have a lot coming up um, in our budget calendar, which is very exciting. Um, just as a note, and I know everyone knows, so we have roughly over 20,000 registered voters, right, in the community, and we usually get less than 600 uh, voters actually voting. So. 
Um, we want to make sure everyone is, is being heard, and that's, this is a really good opportunity for that. Um, so what's up next for us is our March 3rd meeting, which will be our next meeting, our first meeting in March. And there we'll be talking about the instructional program, uh, roughly 57% of our overall budget, about $120 million in that budget line. So um, that's why we moved that to the third presentation, because there's a lot of moving parts in that budget line. Any questions regarding benefits? Go around, anybody? No. Anybody? No? I think you're pretty clear. Good. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.